In today's video, we are going to talk about the strategies, the gear, the, the mindset that I use when it comes to healing difficulty 10 expeditions, and in particular, a Tempest Heart difficulty 10. So the mutations for this week are Hellfire, Indomitable, and Desiccated. Desiccated is really easy compared to some of the mutations that we get at the end line here. Hellfire itself can be kind of spooky, but there are some strategies that you guys can use as a healer to sort of mitigate the damage that comes in from here. Now, first things first, a quick look at the gear. We are, of course, using Corrupted Ward armor. Uh, we've got some of the Tempest gear here which this stuff is really really good i'm going to take my camera off so you can see everything we've also got fire damage absorption gems because again it's a fire week so fire damage absorption is going to help us out quite a lot we've got voracious blade here we've got another piece of tempest gear we have keen beacon and we should have fortifying sacred ground down here as well of course all with fire gems all with corrupted ward we've got a flame protection amulet with a fire gem we've got our good old stone hewn ring with hearty sacred siphoning i just keep this as a Opal gem because it works, you know, elemental damage absorption applies to everything, all different mutations, and I'm lazy to change the gem in that every time. Um, and then finally, we have a healthy toast beloved and nimble earring here as well. Nimble, not the best. I would prefer if this was refreshing toast, but it does the job. Uh, we are using a corrupted bane and refreshing move void gauntlet here because we are going to be going in for a little bit of damage because I do think it's an easier mutation to heal. Uh, we can go and just, you know, do damage when uh, all of our heals are on cooldown. And we have a blast refreshing move and mending protection life staff. Now, based on the uh, perks that we put on the gear, you can probably predict what abilities we're going for, but it's sacred ground, ultra protection, and beacon. I think with this particular run I was using exactly something like this one here so I didn't bother with the keen speed down here um, instead we took this here but you could look to take this away and take the mending touch and we'll talk about that uh, during the video why that's useful some people ask why don't I have divine blessing it's because we don't have enough points I'd have to like give up something over here to get that and I just don't think it's worth giving up like uh, radiance blessing it's not worth giving up protective strength it's not worth you know there's, there's quite a few things that I just don't want to give up so um, this is what we end up going for over here on the void gauntlet we have our void blade we've got oblivion and we have orb of decay now sometimes you'll see me use scream that is typically if the enemies have some sort of healing and we need to reduce their incoming healing with a putrefying scream but there's no real healing that enemies do in tempest heart and because it's not a nature mutation we don't have to worry about that either uh, and finally we'll take a quick look at the stats here and we'll talk about the consumables that i'm using so we've got 100 points in intelligence just to make sure that our void gauntlet does some damage 285 focus kind of a random amount but basically anything a bit with 250 or more would be great and then i go 130 constitution just to make sure that we don't die in one hit the consumables that i was using to make this build work were um, venison tenderloin with blueberry glaze so this is focus and intelligence food it's very cheap on the trading post we also have uh, mana regen food we had active we had the desert sunrise to reduce the duration of dots I was using a powerful honing stone. Oh, no, it's the one just cheaper than this because I'm a cheapskate. I was using the cheaper honing stone. We have corrupted ward potions in case we get into a big spooky pole and we need to, uh, you know, reduce the incoming damage. And we had infused corrupted coating on both my void gauntlet and my life staff, I want to say. Finally, one of the things that was helping my damage numbers look a little bit bigger was uh, having corrupted combat trophies down. So we have a corrupted combat trophy, hopefully, in every house here. Although I think I've messed up my, yeah, my brimstone house is, I don't know what's happened there. But we should have the right trophies down with a corrupted combat trophy, corrupted combat trophy, um, which gives us some pretty nice numbers on the Void Gauntlet, actually. With that being said, let's actually jump in and take a look at the run. So for this particular run, it was an all melee group, actually. And if I'm not mistaken, I, I spotted that my tank had a round shield here. So tank is in light armor as well. What this means is we're, we're going to have to do a lot of healing. Uh, if I remember rightly, I looked at the, the constitution in the group finder and everybody was like five or 50 cons. So we're going to have some very squishy players here. Now, that does mean it is going to be more stressful for you as a healer, but it also means that you can kind of pass the blame to them. It's like, well, if you're going to run five con, you need to basically dodge everything. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if there's any mechanic that does like more than 6,000 damage, you can't get hit by it because it doesn't matter how much healing you have on the ground. Uh, they're going to die if they have five con. So don't always feel bad as a healer. If some of your DPS go down, as long as you had sacred ground down, you had your beacon, you had your orb. But that's that's as much as you can possibly do. You got your heals on the ground. It's up to them to like stay in them and then press the dodge button anyway we pop the orb here just before we go in um the orb is going to apply fortify to everybody give them a 10 percent armor increase which isn't much for people in light armor but it's something and i think it's important to pop it early because what you're going to find is it puts a heal over time on people um and if you start healing people when the when the mob gets aggro the mob will actually go straight to you so you want to put it down nice and early so the heal actually wears off because the heal lasts for 10 seconds but the fortify last for 20 seconds so you want the heal to fall off but the fortify to keep going if that makes sense just for the damage direction 
So I'm figuring out if my tank is going to continue fighting here because sometimes what you'll see is the tank will keep on going further down and they'll pull all the way down the stairs. So always just check if your tank is actually going to start fighting. At this point, he's doing like a charged heavy. It uh, looks like he's going to pop Defiant Stance. So at this point, I do decide it's a good time to put some abilities down. Now, we made a bit of a mistake here. In my, in my opinion, I should have put down Oblivion like first before anything else. But I do go for Oblivion here first and that for some reason. And then we do Sacred Crown. But... Um, you can see we, we t almost pay the price here because one of our DPS nearly died. Um, our tank is also, I mean, they're getting kind of low. They're almost at half HP, but I sh definitely should have done Sacred before we did Oblivion there. Um, but regardless, here we go. There's the Sacred Ground. Then the Orb, because uh, I saw somebody was under 50% there, and we can get value out of Mending Protection, which increases our healing power when Orb heals somebody who's under 50%. So sometimes... You want to use Orb and then you want to use Beacon. In fact, typically you want to go Sacred Ground, Orb, and then Beacon in that order. I think Beacon is the, the least priority of the heal to come out because it doesn't have any uh, healing bonuses. Sacred Ground is the first one to come out because Sacred Ground increases all of your healing when people are in it by 50%, uh, followed by Orb because sometimes you can get the Mending Protection procs. It also has the damage reduction with the Fortify. And then finally, or Beacon can go out at last because it's just a heal of a time and, and a crit chance increase. So... We should see Beacon come out. Yeah, there we go. And then we're going to go in with Void Blade, do some damage. We also pop of Decay just to get that as another heal when it comes back. It also applies Ren to the enemies as well. And then we're going with the Void Blade and just doing some left clicks here to get some uh, damage down. Um, every time we'll, we we attack with the Void Blade, because we have that refreshing move, and when we hit them in the back, we also get crits, which reduce our cooldown, so we can have Oblivion like up all the time, which is really nice for our DPS to do some big, impressive numbers. Now, this is a spooky pull, and again, we're holding on to the Sacred Ground. We're, we're checking, right, where is the tank pulling to? We don't want to put the Sacred Ground down and have it whiff, so make sure. Is the tank definitely staying there? Yep, he's staying there because he's put... He's done his Shockwave. That's like a good sign. Um, so now, again, we, do, we follow the rotation. Sacred Ground goes down. Orb goes down, Beacon goes down, then we do Oblivion, um, and, and the, I think the last priority is to go in with the Void Blade, so make sure you got your heals down, make sure you got your Oblivion down, like do, do go through all of your priorities, and then once everything's on cooldown, we go into Void Blade mode and we just start swinging. Void Blade can have a benefit that it actually can increase your healing as well in a strange way. Um, we'll, we'll go into the, you know, the actual game here, like the live real world for a second here. Um, when you swing in with Void Blade on a big pack of enemies, every time you hit an enemy, you get a uh, stack here of Void Essence. And when you're at six stacks, you activate the Void Caller passive, which can give you a 30% weapon damage heal per second for five seconds, which is, you know, it's, it's a little bit extra healing. Um, so sometimes, you know, going in with the Void Blade into a big pack of enemies, you can almost think of that as like having another heal as well as... Um, it's also going to lower the cooldown of your Orb of Decay, so you can get that rolling and it actually does a pretty good heal as well. So sometimes you can almost treat Void Blade as like another way that you're activating healing, but really it is like the, the lowest priority. You're going to make sure that you're using the Life Staff often enough that you will get the cooldowns out. So you want to be switching back to your Life Staff somewhat fairly frequently. You'll see that, you know, I will switch back to Life Staff and just start doing some left clicks with the Life Staff instead. Even though it seems like it's a DPS loss, it's not our priority. We switch back to the Life Staff sooner rather than later because when we start left clicking with the Life Staff, we'll activate Revitalize, we'll activate Refreshing Move, and we'll also activate Blissful Touch. Um, so to really quickly go over those as well, we have Blissful Touch over here. Every time a light attack passes through somebody, it heals them. So you can just be healing by left clicking with the Life Staff. We also activate Revitalize, uh, which again, lowers our cooldowns. And then finally, we activate Refreshing Move, which again, also lowers our cooldowns. So don't be afraid to just be attacking with the Life Staff. Sometimes you got to go in with the Void Blade. But sometimes you just, if, you're, if your teammates are getting low, switch back to the Life Staff and, and just immediately start lowering those cooldowns. Start doing those left clicks because it's going to help out more from the healing standpoint than the Void Blade would. So at this point, we do pull aggro of one of these little crawly dudes. Uh, those things do hit incredibly hard. They actually body block me in the corner here as well. So um, as a, like a retaliation uh, sort of way that to, to make sure that we don't die here, we have popped our uh, Corrupted Ward Potion. So let me check. Did I pop that? No, I actually popped that a little while ago. I think we used Stone Form here though. Um, so it's like basically you can think of like what options do I have like what buttons have I pressed and stuff I know so my recording is paused here. So let's just go back forward a little bit Yeah, so I think we use stone form here as like one of our um, Like oh, oh crap buttons I think I might have skipped forward a little bit there. Oh wait. No, there we go. So yeah stone form. Yeah pop that in the corner Get stuck, but uh, I see my DPS is going down. So <laughs> most important thing make sure we got the heals going down Get the orb of decay of myself. Try and <laughs> get myself knocked out there by an explosion. Um, that would have been a situation where if we were low constitution, I would have been dead. So 
sometimes, you know, you just end up in a bad spot and uh, having high constitution is the only way to get it out of you, you know, to get yourself out of that. Now, probably what should have, like, you know, the, the, the mega brain, super high IQ healer would have not get themselves stuck in that situation in the first place. But I'm a bit of potato sometimes and it can happen. So, yeah, just uh, if you got to be like aware, looking at those health bars, seeing if they turn red around them. Uh, if in case you guys don't know, one of the ways to tell that you've got aggro is when the enemy's health bar turns red. So we'll try and demonstrate that. Uh, shortly when we go into the pull here now I decide to run forward and activate Isabella because it doesn't look like anybody else is doing it So um, ideally one of the DPS runs forward and does that because you have a little bit of a preamble where she talks um, And it's expected often that the healer pulls in some of the mobs as well So if all everybody's just staying down the stairs down there That's kind of your cue as a healer as to like oh they expect me to do something um, And it typically involves pulling the the boss here. So we got the elite there he is with it with a gold boss. So we're trying to attack that guy and then I'm going to run back down to the DPS so they can uh, kill him because they don't want to all swarm in there um, and get surrounded. They want to pull the enemies to us and then take them down in like a controlled fashion. So uh, this is what I mean, by the way, you see how the, the health bars have these sort of red squiggles around them. That's how you tell that you've got aggro. And uh, when that's the case and you've got these little crawly dudes, you've got to really think about where you're standing because they're going to leap on you and it's going to really, really hurt. So pull these mobs over here. Try and just grab a few if I can, and then we're going to put uh, all of our heals down on the corner here. Sacred Ground, I'm leaving till last. Um, in this case, I think that is correct because the fight hasn't actually properly begun yet, but I do want to start putting some cooldowns down preemptively, but I want Sacred Ground to last the longest because it is like the most important heal. Uh, pop in stone form here to dodge the crawlers. We do have quite a few crawlers on me here, which is a bit spooky, so we're going to have to rotate through a lot of abilities using a health potion. Um, we also use stone form. We still have access to a mana potion for healthy toast. We have access to a regen potion if we need it as well. So just constantly be like looking what options do I have available. Uh, one thing that you need to pay attention for as well, and we're going to see it pop happen pretty often in uh, Tempest Heart, is enemies with explosive. So this is not necessarily with Tempest Heart, but fire mutations. When the enemies have explosive and you have an all melee group, Unless your melee are on top of it, they're often going to get hit by the explosive and it's going to do quite a bit of damage. So trying to roll back preemptively to get yourself out of there so then you can hit them with like an orb of protection or something. Uh, because, you know, I think like one of the ways to, to play healer and play healer well is just expect your teammates to be quite dumb. And, and that is meant, there's no offense to these guys, they were great. But just expect people to play badly and, you know, play defensively. Play as if like the worst, what is the worst thing that can happen in this fight? And then if you play and expect that to happen, then if it goes better, it's not too bad. So, yeah, when, whenever an explosion is coming out from one of these mobs, try and get some distance from it. And then be ready, uh, ideally with a heal, to drop that onto your players if you can. Now this is a bit of a chaotic pull here. Uh, I'll try and describe what I'm doing to the best of my ability, but I'm going to be honest, I wasn't entirely sure what I was doing because uh, some of the DPS decided to go close the portal, which is what we need to do, but some of them stayed and just were farming mobs. Usually what you'll see here and like uh, most runs is the DPS just prioritize, they just close the portal ASAP and the tank and the healer just kind of kite the mobs around. But the DPS were kind of like half and half where some of them were attacking the mobs, some of them were going for the portal. Um, I'm like, my responsibility typically what I always think as the healer is to, you got to keep the tank alive. The tank gets aggro of all the mobs and you just keep the tank alive. So that's all I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to maintain sacred ground and, and heals um, on the tank and then do some damage to get some of the mobs down. Unfortunately, I think at some point here we do pull aggro. I get down pretty low and we get leapt on by two crawlers at the same time or something and we go down. But thankfully the DPS has actually finished the portal phase here. We're going to get a res and then uh, usually at this point people seem to skip the priest because it just takes so long you can't really get them all clumped up together. So you just do a skip and keep on going forward. So this is an interesting point coming up here. Um, different tanks are going to do it differently. Some people choose to skip the tentacles. Some choose to fight the tentacles. So I'm just checking. Uh, one thing that you want to do in a lot of these situations, by the way, is um, put your weapon away. So sometimes you'll find that if you have your weapon um, unsheathed or whatever, let me try and see if we can go back here. You see, I put my life staff onto my back. Um, the reason why we want to do that is because you have this aura here um, this one, Sacred Protection. While holding a Life Staff, increase the amount of incoming healing to your friendlies group by 5%. Now, I don't know if it exactly works this way, but my theory is that when you drink a potion, if you have Sacred Protection active, you increase the healing of somebody drinking a potion by another 5%, and therefore you're healing them, and therefore you get aggro. Now, I, I don't know if it actually works that way. There's, you know, a citation needed. It might be just talking out my butt. Uh, but sometimes you, sometimes it's worth putting the life staff away because if a teammate drinks a potion and you heal them for 5% extra, you heal them and then the mob goes to you 
uh, just by virtue of your teammates drinking a potion. So put your weapon away when you're running from A to B. Uh, it can save you from pulling aggro sometimes and then kind of messing up the pull as a result. So we put the life staff on the back while I'm trying to figure out what the tank is doing here. Again, this is a perk. It's a random group, so we don't know. Looks like he's definitely going to fight that tentacle. So we put sacred ground down. We put the orb down as well. And there's the beacon. And then we're going to oblivion. Orb and then Void Blade. The ideal way to do this would be to pop Void Blade and then do Orb Blast. Ideally, you want to do Orb of Decay last because um, when Orb passes through enemies, it can crit. And every time uh, Orb or any of your abilities crit, it lowers your cooldowns quite dramatically. So typically, you want to try and do Orb of Decay last as it, it's the better way to get your abilities to come off cooldown faster. But just using the abilities, you know, is, is better than like if you have to choose between using the abilities in the right order or just straight up using the abilities, obviously it's better to just use the abilities. This is another pull where sometimes the tank skips ahead. So just taking a little bit of a moment to figure out is the tank going to keep going? Is he going to? No, he's definitely fighting there. So again, we put the sacred ground down. We put the orb. Beacon isn't off cooldown yet. And I'm just going to start immediately swinging because I know that we can actually get more healing if I switch over to the void gauntlet here than waiting for the beacon to come off cooldown. Just the most important heals. Like, when, whenever you fight, you want to make sure that you always have your Sacred Ground down. That's the minimum. Ideally, Sacred and Orb. And, and sometimes Sacred Orb and Beacon. But I don't think it's necessary to always have Sacred Orb and Beacon. Like, Beacon, sometimes you can wait a little bit and then bring it out later on. Uh, but obviously, you always want to make sure that Sacred's coming out. Unfortunately, one of our DPS ran off to the side there and tried to solo the mob. Um, and they did get taken down as a result. I'm going to say that was not my fault. But maybe we could have a, a better positioned version of me could have sort of sat uh, halfway. So, like, further back from where I am now, and then we could heal both of them. We could use an orb on that guy, and uh, we could put a sacred ground down on the tank, or we could just put a sacred on the tank and then leave him and, and go and help the other DPS, but it is what it is. Sometimes you'll see tanks that will pull, like, mobs, uh, almost all of them, to this situation over here. I, I think it's rare that you would fight the tendril with them, but, again, just paying attention to what your tank is doing. Um, if they start attacking with the sword and shield, it's a pretty good idea that they're going to keep going. Sometimes it, it's it's worth bearing in mind that uh, this is an example of the explosive, by the way. Get, get yourself a distance away from the explosive because, yeah, your, your DPS will get hit by it and you want to be ready to react to that. Um, because if there's uh, like a bunch of explosions back to back to back, it can actually kill people. And if you get caught in those chain explosions, it's not good. So sometimes not going in with the Void Blade like we're choosing to do now because we're expecting our teammates to hit, get hit by repetitive explosions, it can actually save you. Whereas if you chose to go in at that moment, uh, people might go down. So sometimes it's being aware like, all right, how many of the mobs here have explosive? Um, should I go in with the Void Blade myself? Do I need to get out? You, you've got to just kind of make that call internally. We are seeing like a lot of the mobs do here do you have explosives. So we're trying to make sure that when they get kind of low, we're switching back to the life staff instead so we can be ready to react and not get caught in the explosion myself. So there's going to be another couple here. We got the sacred ground down ready to go though. Everybody's like staying reasonably good. So sometimes you just got to make that call, pay attention to the affix on the enemy with an explosive. And, uh, you know, can I go in or is this a one where I should kind of stay back and not actually bring out the void blade? A little bit of a messy pull here. We did pop the uh, regen potion and the uh, corrupted ward potion here as well because we grabbed aggro of quite a few mobs. Looks like we're okay, but I did also use the um, stone form there as well. I think sometimes it's it's better to just use something rather than hold on it for hold on for it for too long and then die not using it. So it I guess like trying to be pretty liberal with your use of uh, stone form. Like if you got if you got a stone form, if you're feeling a little uncomfortable, just hit the stone form because look the cooldown it's almost available again for the next boss fight. Um, or mini boss. This guy is an absolute pain in the butt, by the way. This is like my least favorite part of Tempest Heart. So I'll try and describe what we're doing here, but it is a, it is a really messy one. So again, we're following the cues of the tank, waiting to see what the tank's going to do. I don't want to put any heals down until I'm sure he's standing there. He has popped a fine stance, which is a pretty good like indicator that he's planning to, you know, fight there. So at which point, sacred ground down, orb down, beacon down going in with the void blade and usually i try and focus on getting some of the ads down here first so i don't bother going to akiki because he takes 700 years to kill so instead i'm trying to get down some of the ads but people are getting knocked back here some of the dps are on the mobs some of the dps are on the big tank or the big spriggan whatever we want to call it um so this can be a really messy one a really stressful one as a healer and uh, i wouldn't feel too bad about it if it does go badly 
So I put the sacred ground down on my my guy who's gone down there because the idea is that if somebody goes to resurrect him, once he gets rezzed, he he is rezzed inside of sacred ground. So he's as he comes up off the ground, he's already receiving 50% extra incoming healing, and he's got the fortifying sacred ground. So sometimes I like to try and put sacred ground on a player who is downed because it, it makes it more likely that when they get up, they immediately get a tick at the sacred ground and they get a bit of damage reduction and uh, incoming healing. So if you can, I don't, I'm not saying it's always correct, but if you can, try and put a sacred ground down on your downed members uh, because uh, you, you will find pretty often that your DPS goes down and then as they're getting res, they get immediately one shot, which is really frustrating and I'm kind of dumb that that can happen, but it is what it is. So at this point, I'm going in, doing a little bit of Void Gauntlet DPS just to try and get through this fight faster because it, it like literally lasts several months to, to get this guy down. Going with the Void Blade, um, try and get a few swings in and then just position back out again so that we can make sure we can get our cooldown. One thing that you do have to watch out for with mobs like this is they have the, uh, the Phalanx, which puts the shield around them, which is actually really annoying for us as a healer because we rely on doing the left clicks on the enemy to activate our refreshing move. Um, so a lot of your uh, healing uptime and a, a lot of your ability to heal is based on being able to just consistently like left click the enemy. But we're being denied that right now. So we're actually getting very little cooldown reduction because it has the shield on it. And the shield prevents us from connecting any of your attacks. And because none of our attacks are connecting, again, we, we get no cooldown reduction. So I'm actually trying to spend quite a bit of time going in here with the Void Blade instead. Just to trigger the Void Caller passive and to get more Orb of Decay. Um, as opposed to trying to just traditionally, you know, go out and do left clicks with the with the life staff. So yeah, really annoying fight, especially if it has phalanx. Uh, it'd probably be expected that you, if you want to actually get some cooldown reduction, you're gonna have to go stand right next to that mob. And if you're not using void blade, you still might be better off just standing in melee range so you can actually confirm some of those uh, light and heavy attacks there so you can get the refreshing move to trigger. One thing that I like to do as we go through these portals is use it as a, a time for everybody being all clumped up. So throw down the orb there to give everybody the 20 seconds of fortify. Um, one thing you can also do as well, it's been brought to my attention. I haven't actually run it myself, but you can go for uh, mending touch. So we talked about this earlier, but if you do mending touch, apparently the way this works, I can't confirm, is when you do the heavy attack, it says it removes a debuff passing through an ally. So apparently you can do a heavy attack at that point and it will remove that root. Like everybody gets rooted to the ground while they go through the portal for whatever reason. So you can actually remove that so they can go faster. So if you want to do some like pro speedrun strats, you can use Mending Touch and do a charged heavy attack. Um, and then you can remove the sort of awkward moment where you go through the portal and then you're kind of just standing on the ground for a second. So this is a really annoying room in my opinion because it's basically impossible to see any of the effects on the ground. So I actually can't tell really where my sacred ground is there and I find the DPS usually have the same problem as well. It's really hard to see the sacred ground uh, down but yeah just make sure for me I'm typically placing the sacred ground onto the tank. Um, so that, that's something we haven't really covered so far so we'll briefly talk about that. Um, I do have group mode on right now, but you don't need group mode to do this. Uh, so my tank is actually party member number. So I'm party member number one. We have party member two, party member three, party member four. So Darwin is party member number four. And what that means to me is if I go to my settings and then we go to key bindings, uh, target group member number four is mouse button four. So you could set this to be something different, but I highly recommend you do it. Um, set up your group member key binds. So Mouse button 4 is on the side of my mouse here. Mouse button 5 is also on the side of my mouse. F1 is actually also bound to the side of my mouse. And then group member number 5 is the C key on the keyboard, although ideally this would be another mouse button. So um, we talked about this in the healing guide. Link in the description down below if you want to check it out. Um, having a mouse with lots of buttons on the side of it, like a Razer Naga or something like that, not a sponsor, uh, can be pretty adva advantageous uh, when it comes to healing because you can just have all your keybinds like on the on the side to toggle through members. But anyway, we're going back to what we we're talking about, uh, I am very frequently in this dungeon pressing the sacred ground button, which is Q uh, for me, and then I immediately press mouse button four, which then drops the sacred ground onto my tank. And that's typically what I'm doing in most of these fights. We're dropping sacred ground on the tank. Now, one thing you can do, uh, and we talked about this in the Genesis video as well, um, if I can find another go player to go target. So if you imagine you're playing target the healing like this, and uh, obviously, oh, I've, I've done my abilities in the wrong order. If you sacred ground and then uh, it gets locked to it, um, if you're using targeted healing, but you can press middle mouse button to unlock the heal and then place it where you want. So if you just want to place your uh, sacred ground, like on, not on your tank, but kind of like in between every over here so it hits like the melee DPS at the same time that's a strategy you can do again that's just middle mouse button on the mouse uh, obviously the other strategy you could go for with this particular set of healing is just to take uh, targeted heals off so gameplay 
and then go down to the healing section and just take targeted healing off since you don't really need to target the heals, but it can be pretty handy. I like to drop, again, Sacred Ground on the tank, but sometimes it is correct to just kind of drop it in the in the fray rather than specifically on the tank because they might have ran off to the side or something. So going back to this crazy fight here with um, with the High Maiden, uh, it looks like at this point our DPS have ran off to the side to try and get the mobs down. Um, so we're just going in and helping them out there. Heals are about to come off of cooldown, so we're doing a dodge to apply the bend light, and then we do a charged heavy attack to get intensify. Now, for some reason, I've got like a character bug here where there's no hot, like no buffs are appearing on my character's hotbar, but it does appear as though they still actually work. So, I'm not sure if we actually covered this earlier on in the video, but typically before you try and place every heal down, uh, you want to try at the very least to do a dodge roll because that will apply bend light which is a uh, passive in your life staff tree bend light says after five seconds after dodging you have 20 percent extra healing and then you have intensify which is when you land a heavy attack with the life staff you get a 10 percent increase in healing and then it's a 20 percent then it's a 30 percent so you can land up to three charged heavy attacks um, and you can also do the dodge so we'll probably do it here there's the dodge for the bend light and then we're going to go for the heavy attack there's the dodge again, to, just to make sure we definitely got it. There's another heavy, and then that we... So we could have gone for a third heavy there to get the uh, three times intensify, but sometimes that's a bit overkill, you know, you just like, let's actually start the fight here rather than trying to do all of this setup, you know, because, yeah, I, I think sometimes you can try and set up a fight too much when it's better to just like, typically, dodge roll, heavy attack, and then start there. But if you really want to... You know, like if you think that the, the healing is going to be super intensive, sometimes if you have the uh, luxury, go for the three charged heavies before you put your heals down because they'll all heal for a, a pretty significant uh, increase. Something that we were doing to the brute there that maybe we didn't uh, cover too well was doing uh, charged heavy attacks with the void gauntlet as well. So the brutes in particular, they have this stamina bar and you can get rid of the stamina bar by doing a charged melee attack. So if you charge up with the void gauntlet um, just by holding down left mouse button, you can get rid of its stamina faster. At this point, we're just following the tank where this is the usual strategy that I would recommend as a healer. If in doubt, just follow the tank. Um, the DPS is sometimes going to do their own thing, like getting the gatherables here. So we just continue to follow the tank and hopefully the DPS is going to come join me. Pull is about to start. I am going to get uh, risky and go for the Scorch Stone here. No, we're not. We're going to put the Sacred Ground down. Good job, Baggins. I was going to say, like, uh, it should make sure I got Sacred Ground down. Get Sacred and then do the thing that you got to do after. Always, always, always Sacred Ground first and then do whatever you got to do. Uh, the most important thing, so did thankfully uh, make the correct play there. Didn't just like start mining the Scorch Stone and leave the tank to die. Again, this is uh, this tank was in light armor, so we don't actually know how much constitution he has, but we, we definitely want to make sure that we get that sacred ground down like at all times, basically. Um, and sometimes you'll see, like, uh, we'll make the decision actually, because I'm like kind of weary that my sacred ground is going to fall off, like it's got a 12 second cooldown here. Um, but I will actually switch back to the life staff here to start then spamming some uh, left clicks to get the cooldown reduction. So you see it's seven seconds left on the uh, sacred ground here. And then if we do left click, now it's four seconds. Then it's three. Then it's zero, basically. And sacred ground is just about to disappear here. Uh, but no worries, because we got another one. So what will typically happen is uh, if you don't go for that, you're going to do this. And then you put the sacred ground down it's an 18 second cooldown but sacred ground actually only lasts for 12 seconds so there's going to be a six second window where you have no sacred ground down uh, but if you just do a few left clicks in that six second window then um, you, you make sure that you basically permanently have sacred ground so what you typically want to do um, like one like sort of guideline that you can do for it is sacred ground and then you do stuff with the void blade obviously we put beacon and orb down as well now uh, but we're going to do this. And then when we see the cooldown on Sacred Ground get to like sort of like 10 seconds, 8 seconds, we want to switch over and start doing some left clicks, lowering the cooldown, lowering the cooldown, lowering, the, and then it should be ready to go again. So we don't have this sort of window where there isn't any Sacred Ground, if that makes sense. So at this point, we're going to go retrieve our DPS that somehow got downed on the way over, pop the orb to get that extra increase in healing from the Mending Protection. I'm checking to see, is my tank going to go all the way through? Nope, he's definitely fighting here. So Sacred Ground goes down, Oblivion, Void Blade, Orb of Decay, uh, do a few left clicks here when the like cooldown on sacred ground looks like it's about to yeah there we go there's that eight seconds sort of rule eight to ten seconds we switch back to life staff so we can get another sacred ground down and then we can go back uh to, to void blade so sometimes you know you don't want to like just spend too long attacking with void blade because uh it's it's not the correct thing you want to switch back to life staff to start activating a few refreshing moves and revitalize. Now at this point, I'm kind of getting a bit greedy here. I'm actually not going to put down the sacred ground because I know we're as soon as we kill this guy, we're going to continue the run. 
it is a bit of a risky strat in hindsight it probably would have been better to just put the sacred ground down because i know that typically the tank usually runs all the way up to the top of this hill so it would have been off cooldown fast enough uh, we do have aggro here we saw a couple of mobs that were red so just be ready with that dodge key maybe be ready to uh, pump stone form or a uh, corrupted ward potion there um your infused ward potion um, but thankfully, we, you know, we, with some swift dodges, we do manage to make it through. Now, I'm not sure if the tank is planning to kill all the mobs here, or if we're just going all, all the way through to the bosses. Either way, I'm making sure that I got some heals down so people don't die. I don't mind if I get aggro, because the mobs actually won't come through this side of the door. So if we get aggro, uh, we're just saving our DPS here. Now, here comes uh, the first of like seven times that you fight Isabella or whatever in Tempest Heart. This particular Isabella has a pretty spooky mechanic where she sort of steps back like that and then she almost one shots everybody so trying to like it's it's awkward with this one because you'll put the sacred ground down and then she'll immediately step back anyway so knowing that that is probably going to happen I, I could have anticipated that and and not put the sacred ground down straight away um, and then but of course as soon as they put it down she's just going to move back anyway so this is a pretty frustrating fight as a healer because your AoE healing it's, you know, she's just constantly pulling it out of the fight. So just be aware of that. Maybe sometimes you could try and put sacred ground like a, like a halfway house. Put it, you know, where you think she's going to be in the next step. But it's kind of hard to predict which way she's going to move. Um, relying a lot on that one to put beacon onto the tank. So or even sticking beacon to Isabella because obviously all the melee are going to be hitting Isabella. And then using a orb of decay for some extra healing and orb of protection for some healing as well. Sadly, sacred ground. Again, she's just going to be moving people out of it. Tank is pinged over to the right there. That That's where he's going to pull to. Um, so, again, this tank's doing a pretty good job of kind of letting us know what's going on. Uh, we're kind of getting a pretty good idea of, you know, when this tank is, is going to stand and fight and when they're going to run. So, they did pop the Defiant Stance there. At least I think I heard it. So, at this point, we're going in, popping the abilities. Now, one thing that's kind of frustrating about this fight, and you're going to find this happens pretty often in quite a lot of fights um, in New World and Expeditions, is you're going to get aggro of the ranged mobs. And there's not really too much you can do about it. We do have a, a musket who's up at the top there. And we have another musket that's down at the bottom. Um, and, yeah, the, unless the tank runs up and hits it, which right now they just want to get this mob down, there's not too much. So, just be prepared to be dodging. You know, don't stand still for too long. Don't spend too much time going with a Void Blade because you're just going to get shot down by these muskets. Make sure you're using your potions to keep yourself topped back up. Don't allow yourself to fall below half because those muskets will then kill you. Um, and you could also potentially look to go around the corner as well. So if you have the luxury, you could try and like walk around the corner so the musket has to then follow you around the corner so he has line of sight of you. Because if the musket can't see you, like it, there's something blocking vision, they'll try and walk around that thing to then try and attack you. So... It's a strategy that you can sometimes run where if you have aggro of ranged mobs and, and the tank can't get to them, you can just kind of walk behind a rock and then the, the ranged mob has to come into melee range effectively. So here we go into Isabella fight number two, two of seven. Uh, and this is, again, this kind of same mechanics where she steps back and then just does a ton of damage. Now we actually have quite a lot of struggle in this fight here, which is unusual of all the places to like have a, have a wipe and a nearly end of the run. It's typically not uh, this part with Isabella, but yeah, she just really does a lot of damage here. Um, and she keeps moving back constantly, so it's hard for me to get any of the heals down. So it's like something to be aware of that when you go into this fight, just expect a lot of movement. So we got Sacred Ground down there, and our DPS is able to fight in it for a little bit. I'm going to try and go for the res here, but then I see everybody's getting really low, so like... Sometimes you got to make the call like if you if you have the ability to go for the res go for it But don't allow other people to die while you're resing because that's just gonna exacerbate the problem So this is looking pretty dicey here. I'm gonna try and get a res on the tank But then she unfortunately interrupts us here um, I don't and then she's gonna shoot me here as well I know that's gonna kill me because it does so much damage So we have to dodge and get around that one I'm trying to just keep the heals down on top of these bodies here so we can uh you know, make sure that we can actually get the tank up. And then somebody else goes down as well. So pretty much everybody's been, been down at this point, apart from me. I know at this point I've got aggro, so we're not going for reses anymore. At this point, I'm just trying to, like, evade and heal tanks. So as long as we have aggro of Isabella, we're just going to keep moving. We get the sacred ground down on the tank. He was finally back up. Nearly go down to that one there, but this constitution, the fire damage absorption gems, and also the corrupted ward is saving us. Um, and I'm, I don't know if that, maybe that's void damage, actually, that she's doing there. Uh, but yeah, somehow we just about hold on to that fight there. It was a really messy one. Popping all by myself to get that 50% increase in healing. Waiting for my potions to come off cooldown. This is pretty spooky though at this point. Like, I don't really want to get close and get hit with any of the attacks. I'm just staying at ranged here. And she does go down. But um, sometimes things can just go wrong at the, at the weirdest of times. And it's when you get aggro, you can use that. And you can be the playmaker as, as the healer. Just some well-timed dodges. 
Um, and obviously one thing that you have access to that nobody else on your team does is the ability to keep your health topped up. Like they can drink a potion, but after that they haven't got anything. So sometimes just standing in your sacred ground, pressing dodge at the right time, buying time for everybody so they can get the tank up and get things back is, is like just the play. And you can actually surprisingly save a lot of runs from going really badly just by, again, pressing the dodge key at the right time, using your stone form, standing in sacred ground. You can become like a, a, a sort of backup tank uh, when it all else fails. We're going to skip ahead at this point because I don't think there's like really too much for you to focus on as a healer at this particular run. You just got to like uh, get to the turrets, shoot the eyes, uh, put a heal on people who are standing on the guns. So I typically try and get a heal down on the guns here. Um, as a, I wouldn't recommend as a healer that you go on the repeaters. Again, you typically want to be uh, focused on just making sure that you got the heals in the area next to the repeater. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll skip ahead a little bit here to the next part. So here we are. Going into uh, uh, Isabella number seven or whatever. Um, Isabella again, Isabella the third. And uh, we're going to go through here. Sometimes you'll see that people pull. So I'm actually checking right now to see how we're doing on the enemies killed. Um, this is going to sometimes fall to you as a responsibility to the healer. Because again, you you are the, one of the few people with a ranged attack. I mean, there is the uh, hatchet or whatever. Um, but we're at 93 out of 125. So we got quite a, we got to get quite a few mobs here. Um, to make sure that we get the enemies killed. So um, I've just decided at this point, again, if we just take that, uh, you know, understanding that if you play as if everybody doesn't know what they're doing and, and you hold their hands, then you make sure that the run goes well. So um, what we're going to do after we get this guy down, and th this is a pretty standard fight where you just want to make sure that you've got your sacred, your beacon, your orb, then the oblivion, and then you go in with the void blade. Um, it's just the, the standard rotation there. Dodge back when he does the staff bash. So you got to be careful sometimes if you're being in melee range. But what I'm trying to say is at this point as we're coming up, I know that we need to get a lot of mobs. So I'm actually going to start attacking some of these guys and bringing them in. Um, because again, one thing that you have that your melee players typically don't have unless somebody does a throwing hatchet is the ability to just quickly pull mobs. The life staff projectile is like one of the furthest traveling projectiles in the game other than the bow and the musket. Um, I think it's got a 40 meter range on it or something, so you can actually pull mobs from pretty far away. Now, what, I'm not being like, you know, if I miss something, I miss something. I'm not going to spend too long, like, trying to make sure that I attack them and attack them again, because priority is on healing here. Uh, but whenever we get, like, a, a moment of downtime, whenever we've, like, got through a few of our mobs here, and we're popping stone form, by the way, to avoid getting knocked over by the explosives, um, I am then going to go in and pull a few more mobs, because I know that we have to get, like, uh, 20 plus kills here or something to make sure that we do actually hit the enemies killed and subsequently get the gold on the run. So just pulling in a few more dudes. Sometimes it might be worth checking with your tank or with your party members if they're okay if you pull extra stuff because they might just think that you're pulling random stuff for the sake of it. Uh, so sometimes you want to kind of have that conversation, but I just uh, had this sort of understanding like people are going to be okay if we do this and if they question why. But we're clearly under on the amount of mobs that we killed and I know at this point going from here on the run, there's basically no more mobs. We have uh, the bit where we, we stop the expanding dome, and then after that, there's, there's gonna, not going to be any more mobs. So we have to try and get as many kills as we can at this section, because there's not there's like basically no opportunities for after this. We just two boss fights back to back. We got Nishitan, and we got Isabella the the uh, the eighth or whatever. It's just standard stuff here. We're making sure that we got Sacred Ground down. Um, we're making sure we got Orb, we got Beacon, and then we're rolling over to the Void Gauntlet. When Sacred Ground is about to come off of cooldown, we switch back to Life Staff to start doing some left clicks to get the cooldown. So we have Sacred Ground ready for the next set of mobs. It's just the, you know, it's a it's an ongoing rotation. Often the heals don't become too special between each one. I did check the enemies killed um, as we were going into the next section here just to see how we're doing. I think I, we might not have needed these two extra, but it's better safe than sorry. Popping the stone form there because we got pretty low. Um, but obviously, once Void Caller passive gets active, your health tops up pretty quickly. Sometimes when I know the explosion's coming out, we do an Orb of Decay preemptively to make sure that there's like a rolling heal. And also we get the 10% uh, Fortify from it as well. Now, this is a tricky one where I find that it's uh, kind of hard to get the cooldown reduction fast enough. We kill this mob so fast that there's still 14 seconds left on the sacred ground down here. I think what I could have done um, and what I would recommend is is don't spend too much time with the Void Blade here. Be uh, be doing more left clicks with the with the life staff. So sacred ground and then at, probably at this point the correct play is to just continue left clicking with the sacred ground. So we have, oh, sorry, continue left clicking with the life staff so we have the sacred ground down for the next pull. Uh, but luckily, you know, we've, we've got all we've got beacon um, so we can get another sacred ground down here. And I think I'm going to switch to the void blade 
But again, it might be a good play to uh, just use Oblivion and Orb of Decay and then immediately switch back to the Life Staff and just spend most of my time left clicking with the Life Staff so that we can get that Sacred, cool, uh, sacred Ground cooldown for fights like this. But luckily, we still managed to finagle our way through without it being too uh, difficult. Getting another cheeky Orb of Protection out there just as everybody comes through the portal. Um, this guy isn't anything particular special. There's a lot of like uh, parts of Tempest Heart, which I feel like uh, Amazon can kind of cut down, to be honest. It's just like go into a room, fight a random dude, go into another room. His mechanics aren't anything particularly special. Um, this guy does have a pretty like hard hitting frontal cleave, so sometimes you got to be watching for that. Uh, he seems to hit people on the way back as well. So maybe be being prepared and being ready with an Orb of Protection to hit people when they fall under 50% so you can get that big increase in healing. Or have like an Orb of Decay ready to fire out and then when it comes back you can detonate it. Just basically having access to some sort of like burst healing uh, might be a good idea going into that fight. So here we are, Cheeky Naishaten. Um, this is a fight that I actually don't really think is that difficult to heal. It's one of those fights where if your DPS don't dodge, then it goes bad. But if your DPS just press the dodge key, then it's not going to be too bad. So uh, yeah, one thing that you got to watch out for here is um, when he does bow attacks. So there's one particular bow attack that's very spooky. There's also the that tail whip as well, which almost one shot everybody, but thankfully people did survive. Also want to make sure that you move out of the uh, when he like puts an orange circle around him. You definitely don't want to be standing in that as well. Uh, but the priorities are fairly similar here as to where everywhere else. We just want to have Sacred Ground down. Uh, we want to put Beacon on him and then we want to switch over to Void Gauntlet. Do some left clicks with the Void Gauntlet until we have about 10 seconds left on our Sacred, sacred Ground cooldown. And then at which point we switch back to the Life Staff and start doing some left clicks just to make sure that there's no, you know, that again, that, that sort of time frame where Sacred Ground isn't on cooldown. Uh, we can get rid of it. Probably going to fast forward at this point of the fight because these circles are so boring and last like way too long. Okay, so here we are. Um, Oblivion or Corruption Core coming up here. I, sometimes I like to put Sacred Ground down on the Corruption Core. Not sure if it was the correct play here, but uh, he was doing the bow mechanic where he like pew, 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 he does a rapid fire. And that's the other bow mechanic there as well where he puts a target over somebody's head and then he fires in a straight line. You want to make sure that you don't, if that's on you, that you move away from your teammates. And if you see it on a teammate, you want to move away from them. It can be a bit of a stressful situation where you go left and they go left and you go right and they go right. But hopefully the person who gets the target above their head uh, just runs away. Uh, a little quick tip that you can take on this fight, and it is hard to track it sometimes, is where the mobs spawn from. There is, So you see the mob spawned on the left side over there. That means that there is not going to be a circle at that area. So wherever the mobs spawn from, there won't be a circle at that location. So if, you know... We'll try and give like a quick example here, um, if I can find my mouse on the screen somewhere. So say if we saw a mob spawn over here in this area where between these two circles, if another dude just spawned out of there, what that would mean is that area is going to be safe on the next set of uh, circles. So you want to try and pay attention where you can to see where the dudes are coming from and then you can start moving in that direction preemptively. Uh, just something that can save you from taking damage from the circles that way. At this point, I don't really use too many heals. I'll, I'll like I won't use Sacred Ground uh, unless uh, everybody's standing in one location. I'll try and just like hold on to it for a bit. Just using a uh, orb uh, to top people up is usually going to be enough there. Obviously, make sure that you're moving out the circles yourself. Put the Oblivion down when we can. Not going to go in with the Void Blade just yet because my Sacred Ground is about to come off a of cooldown, as is Beacon. So sometimes we hold on to it. And then we're going to go in and also help do some DPS on the Corruption Core. Even if you don't have a Void Blade, I still highly recommend that you attack that Corruption Core with everybody. Because if that thing goes off, it's pretty bad. So yeah, just uh, whatever DPS you can contribute to it, make sure it goes down. Otherwise, everybody's going to get hit pretty hard and get a uh, stack of the debuff that is unique to this fight. Which I think we're going to see some coming out on the DPS here. Um, that's another thing that can be pretty stressful as a healer in the Nice 10 fight is if people get hit with the Circles. Like so, um, they get a stack on them which does uh, like 1% of their health or 2% of their health every second. Now thankfully it's fire damage and uh, because it's fire mutation everybody's using fire damage absorption gems anyway. So it's actually not going to do too much damage to them which is another reason why this week is just a really good week to do uh, Tempest Heart. Uh, but yeah, we just want to make sure that we got, like, this is the point where we're going to use Sacred Ground for people because we want to make sure that those dots, uh, so it looks like somebody has two stacks there. want to make sure that we've got a heal, stick to those people, and we're constantly topping their health up. Just in case they get hit by another one, it doesn't one-shot them effectively. It's going for the the dash there. Um, sometimes when Nishaten comes back out of the ground, 
he he will go for the person that has aggro, typically the tank, and he'll charge towards them if they are a distance. So it's like kind of a mechanic to make sure that the tank can't range them. Uh, not sure. No, we do go for the corruption core here. Sometimes you can avoid the corruption core and just like all in on him. Um, but I guess we're playing it safe here. If that is going to be the strat that the DPS decide to ignore the corruption core and all in on Nicerton, you probably want to make sure that you've got a heal ready to pop the second it explodes, because it is going to do a lot of damage, and uh, he might, like, kill them shortly after that. But got him down there. Fairly clean fight. Uh, people got some stacks, but again, the fact that it's a fire week, people have fire damage absorption gems, probably helped us quite a lot there. Final fight here coming into Isabella. One thing that I'm checking for right now is um, Corruption Elixirs, I think is what they're called. So it's kind of like the Blight Tinctures. Is it a Corruption Tincture? Corruption Tincture is what I'm looking for. It's actually pretty good to pop those uh, in the fight because it reduces the amount of damage you take from uh, the dot. So there's a damage over time that she puts on you that it really sucks. It slows you and it hits really hard. So I was looking for a Corruption Tincture, but I don't have one on me. But if you want to have a little bit of a extra safety in this fight, bring a Corruption Tincture in particular because it can be uh, pretty good. But anyway, Isabella is a pretty like sort of standard fight. Uh, it's not too dissimilar to Nishaten where you basically Sacred Ground, Orb, Beacon, Make sure that you've got all the AoE heals down and then switch to the Void Gauntlet and then start doing Void Gauntlet stuff. So, yeah, again, it's it's not really that different. Like, the, the playstyle with the AoE healer is fairly similar to everything, like, else that we experience where it's heals first, then it's Oblivion, then it's Void Blade, and then finally Orb of Decay or some, in some variation of that. But always want to make sure that you're putting down your heals. And when your Sacred Ground is coming off a cooldown, like, 9, 8, eight to 10 seconds, Switch over to the uh, life staff and start doing some left clicks there. Now, this is a part of the fight that can really uh, like go badly. If you see that red target above your head, you gotta dodge. If you don't, when she swoops in and you don't dodge, she'll knock you on the ground. And then sometimes while you're getting back up, she'll swoop and hit you again. So you gotta watch out for that one. Uh, we did, like one thing as well um, that is worth bearing in mind. If you mess up the placement of your sacred ground, like I did here, um, so we just go back and we'll watch that again here. So dodge in the swoops. There's another swoop. We put the sacred ground down, and I think that's where she's going to land, but she actually lands somewhere else. At this point, I'm not switching over to Void Blade. I'm staying with the Life Staff, and I'm doing left clicks. Like, if you mess up the placement of your sacred ground, stay with Life Staff and just keep left clicking, keep left clicking to get the cooldown so you can put down another sacred ground ASAP. Um, so, yeah, it's just like if, if you make the mistake, you got to try and rectify it as soon as possible by just sticking with the life staff. So don't switch over to that uh, Void Gauntlet. Like, cor correct like 90% of the time. Uh, unfortunately, that guy, he's not get back up. He's, he's got the Tempest above him now. So we just have to say goodbye to uh, one of our DPS players for a good while now. Typically, Isabella does land over here. But again, I, I called it wrong and she went over to the left side. But usually she lands like uh, over there. But no worries, she's going to hover over anyway. So we can actually just go in with the Void Blade here. We don't have to try and make up for our mistake again. Uh, Sacred Ground is off cooldown here, or it, it did disappear from the ground, so a little bit of a mistake there to not like make sure that another one was immediately ready to go. Pumping the uh, Orb of Protection there on my DPS who's stuck off to the side. Looks like they have decided to go and try and get that guy up there. <laughs> Unfortunately, gets hit with the with the cleave on the way back, and now we're going to do some dodges because Isabella is targeting me. Finally leaving us alone. I realize at this point that we're probably not going to be able to deal with tank healer DPS, so I'm going to try and get the res myself. Uh, but then luckily my DPS player over here decides that he's gonna do it So we're just gonna try and keep him topped up make sure that we get some heals over here uh, So when people get up they don't immediately die uh, So if we try and get a heal ready to go as they come up it can help us a lot sacred ground of course is on the tank though Typically sacred ground always going on the tank And it does look like fury is actually also gonna make the play to close down the uh, the tempest here So we got a little bit of breathing room now because I think if she puts all three down things get uh, pretty complicated At this point she's like down to 10% so we can't actually just burst it down Isabella does actually die surprisingly fast if you just go in for the DPS and uh, that's the kill there so Nothing too special nothing in particular that you really have to watch out for for a healer here It's just making sure that you know You've got the sacred your orb your beacon before you're switching to the void blade Try and pay attention to what the tank is doing. Um, wait, you know, don't put that heal down too early. Make sure, like, you see the tank. Sometimes as well, tanks will shockwave, and then they will keep on running. So you kind of just got to get a feel for it and, and see what your tank is doing. If they use Defiant Stance, that's a pretty good uh, indicator, though. When they bash the sword and the shield, that's a pretty good indicator that they are going to stand there. Uh, typically, when I see them use the Defiant Stance, the old doof, doof, that's when my Sacred Ground is going out. 
but yeah hopefully you guys found this insightful i don't know how these videos are going to do i thought we'd try them if they seem to do well you guys enjoy these we'll continue to do them for each uh different mutation so every every time there's a new mutation next week we can do another set of videos if you guys want to see some tanking or some dps some different perspectives i can do that as well and we can provide some commentary on what i'm thinking on what i'm doing but yeah hopefully this video series is uh is good uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you want to see more of this stuff, make sure you go ahead and click the subscribe button. Like the video if you enjoyed the video. And uh, I'll see you guys all in the next one.